Hello and welcome to another episode of the BLS Podcast. I'm David Choi. I'm Emily Witten. I'm Sam Sullivan. I'm Peter Choi. And today we are joined with two science teachers, uh, Mr. Blicky and Mr. Glago. Hello. Hi. So this is going to be an interview on kind of eighth grade science. Uh, recently we uh, found out that like uh, eighth grade science is going to start being a thing. So. Oh, it's been a thing. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> so tell me about it. What's it's kind of thing. What's been the history behind this kind of uh, well, eighth grade science, and why did it get like, why was it taken off, and why is it being put back into? Uh, sure. Home? Yeah. Um, so uh, our school historically has had a different course. Um, assignment process than a lot of other schools. Um, the classics, obviously, you've got the Latin in classes uh, in the first four years here, right? Take Latin. Yeah. So um, the way the classes were assigned were, were different from a lot of places. So um, over, I would say, the last 20, 30 years, like every school in, in the Commonwealth started having science in uh, every middle school year. And our school is a a unique middle school and so we would have um, a period where there was no science in the seventh grade but there was science in the eighth grade and then it moved towards there being science in the seventh grade but no science in the eighth grade but really the the norm across uh, Massachusetts um, is that there's science every year um, and uh, there's a uh, an MCAS test for science in the eighth grade that students at Boston Latin School have historically struggled on a great deal having not taken it. So I would say five, six years ago, uh, members of the science department started to try and plan out a class that could work and uh, meet the needs um, for student learning, you know, address things that uh, students weren't learning in their uh, excellent seventh grade earth science class and make sure that that could work. And then there was um, work with, uh, with Dr. Mooney Tata and with Mr. C, and now with Ms. Garrett in order to uh, figure out a way for it to fit into the schedule. So this, this school year, 2017-2018, it has been a class where students have met every other day, so like day 135 or day 246. And uh, next year will be uh, the first year that science in eighth grade will meet every day in the cycle. Mm-hmm. And so it's like the first science class in... First, first eighth grade science class in what thirty years? Yeah, but but like by by nature, like the the idea of eighth grade science is like that middle school science class in the year where it wasn't present. So although it had been offered in eighth grade, um, I believe in the eighties, I'm citing Mr. Akison for that uh, <laughs> that historical data. Um, it wasn't offered in the in the seventh grade at that time. Right. So this this is really the first time in the history of Boston Latin School that uh, that there's been science in the seventh grade and in the eighth grade. Right. Okay. So do eighth graders, do they still have two studies or do they now replace one study with the science course? Yep. Yeah. So, so as a result of having the additional course in their schedule, they are down to um, one study, which doesn't include the, the W block, with, which they get every week. Um, but as far as um, making it so that the students have fewer options in terms of the arts, um, that's that's actually not the case. So students who are um, interested in taking the um, theater classes and the art classes can still do that with the eighth grade science. Um, I think the only change is that they can't take both simultaneously, which I think only a handful of students were doing anyway. Right? Yeah, we met with um, some members of the music and arts department uh, a couple of years ago to talk about that, and at the time the number was between 30 and 40 students would be impacted by that. Right. Mm-hmm. So... You were saying how there was a committee that decided about, like, made decisions about the 7th and 8th grade science. Were either of you part of that? Um, do, you, do you mean, like, uh, like recently? Um, um, you were talking about how it was 7 or to 9 years ago? Oh, yeah. So, um, so that was, it, it sort of started with, uh, with teachers in the science department wanting to, um, to fill what we consider to be a bit of a void. And, uh, and the... I wouldn't say it was ever a formal committee, but it was teachers talking with teachers. So it started with science teachers talking with science teachers. And then we talked to teachers in other departments and the eighth grade clusters and administrators to all sort of like find a a common solution to the problem. So a committee is kind of like, I don't know, can sometimes be kind of closed door. But I've I've felt that over the, the past six or so years that it's been a very open door process that people from, you know, sort of all 
um, departments and sort of like points of view at the school have been able to be involved, which has been actually a really cool thing. Okay. Um, why do you guys think that it's important for students to have science in the eighth grade? Um, so what we're finding, um, like Mr. Balicki said, um, is students entering the ninth grade um, really had a gap in terms of their understanding, not so much in terms of content, which isn't as important, but really understanding the nature of science um, and how what you know what scientists do and how science is done, and that's sort of become the primary goal of the of the course. It isn't so much about delivering um, more content, but getting students to understand um, how we learn science in a science class, um, and just getting them ready for those higher level courses in ninth and tenth and eleventh grade with uh, biology one, chemistry, and physics. Yeah, and, and beyond that, like like middle school um, is is a time when uh, when there's still a, a great deal of like sort of like wonder um, about the natural world, and uh, and eighth grade science is an opportunity to be able to help students, you know, sort of like answer some of those questions that they may have about the world around them. Right now, we're engaged in this project that's about um, ecosystems, and I'm impressed by just how interested students are in about the organisms and ecosystems that they've chosen to study like they're just really into polar bears or they're just really into blue herons or, or something like that so beyond the um, sort of curricular needs um, it's also meant to uh, address um, I believe uh, every person's sort of like natural sense of wonder about the world and uh, desire to explore and, and learn more about the things that surround them right and it's 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 an important time in, in, a, in a student's development in terms of their age. Um, I think they're still at the point where they're sort of, they feel free to ask questions and they don't feel uncool about being very excited about science. Not that that particularly fades with every student in high school, uh, but obviously with younger students, the, the enthusiasm for science is definitely there. So we're kind of missing out on that important period in a student's career, I guess you would say. Um, by not having um, a science course for them. Yeah, in, in exactly. Yeah, and, and, and our goal is uh, is really to, you know, sort of like the, um, we can imagine like the, the seventh grade teacher sort of like grabbing the football and running with it. And of course, the, the 60s love learning about the universe and how stars are formed mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, like sun, earth, moon cycles and all those sorts of awesome things in, in seventh grade um, earth science. And we hope to sort of continue... Um, their ability to, to learn about different systems um, on Earth in, in eighth grade, and then as they transition to ninth grade, they're focusing more upon you know the human organism and, and the way that um, the uh, the systems of the body work together and things like that. So this we're, we're trying not to stray too much into sort of like teacher talk, but something that was very important for all members of the science department and also members of the school is the ver vertical progression of ideas throughout the entire time that students are present in science classes at Boston Latin School. And having science in the eighth grade allows us to fully articulate those ideas and give students an appropriate middle and high school science experience. Do you think much is going to be changed next year uh, based on like what you've experienced this year with eighth grade science? Or uh... <laughs> yep, yeah. Well, first of all, students have to make that climb um, up three flights of stairs every day, so their leg muscles are going to be totally oh. jacked. Honestly, as, it's, it's, as it's a terrifying. Result. It's awful. Yeah, um, but yeah, of course. I mean, eighth grade students are going to have to deal with uh, a slightly fuller schedule and slightly. Um, larger workload as a result of having another academic course, fewer studies. Um, but hopefully, I mean, based on the feedback that we've received thus far, hopefully they enjoy the class and, and it's something they see as a positive, not, not as a negative. Not something that takes up their time but makes good use of their time. Yeah. And or organizationally, sorry to cut you off there, I just wanted to cap on. Um, we as teachers, and I believe students as well, have struggled a great deal with the every other day model. You know, just for a recent example, um, the students who um, I we saw on Monday, 
the last time we had seen them had been the previous Tuesday because they were meeting Tuesday, Thursday that week. Thursday, there was a snow day. That meant there were six calendar days in between what they had last learned and what they were supposed to learn. And the human brain doesn't work very well under those sorts of conditions. So we're very excited to be able to deal with a more, um, you know, sort of like normal schedule where we get to see them every day and sort of build upon their learning that way. So we've been talking a lot about the course itself, and we really haven't been asking you about how you feel about science, how you feel about teaching, pros, cons, come on guys. <laughs> well, I think obviously we wouldn't be here if we didn't have uh, a love of science in the natural world and uh, passing on that knowledge to, uh, to younger people. Um, yeah, Mr. Blakey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, that's that's the, uh, the I guess that's the politically correct answer. I guess I, I couldn't be a, I couldn't be a professional athlete or a, or um, a scuba diver or something more exciting. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. No, you, kind of, you kind of brought it to the student teacher basketball game. That's I think true. there's still a hope for you. Maybe at least in the minor leagues or in Europe. Um, yeah, yeah, for me, like I've been um, teaching science has been my only career. Um, I started teaching right when I graduated uh, college as an undergrad, and I got my master's degree while I was teaching. So um, teaching eighth grade science, in addition to some of the issues that I've kind of brought up about like the need it serves for the school and everything like that, is, uh, is a new challenge. And I think when a career is taking place over the long term, you know, for me it'll be 35 years or so, it's important to take on new challenges and try new things and to kind of get outside of your comfort zone. You know, I, I felt very comfortable teaching um, chemistry and AP chemistry, and eighth graders are quite different from AP chemistry students, and, and I'm learning a lot. So sometimes that brings about additional stress and, uh, and gray hair, um, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's a good thing. In the long term, it's a very good thing. Uh, so, do you think based off, or do you think because their students are taking science in the eighth grade that the upper level classes are going to change much because there's more basis? So <laughs> we can answer that in, in a couple of ways. Um, for example, in biology, one of the labs that every student does is a, uh, is a buffer lab. And in order to understand how buffers work, one needs to understand what pH means. And in order to understand what pH means, one needs to understand that matter is made into sometimes particles which are neutral and other times particles which are charged. All of that stuff had to be taught in biology in ninth grade, whereas now everything except for the buffer concept is being taught in eighth grade, which should enable the high school biology teachers to, we hope, um, be able to spend a week allowing students to make choices about their buffer lab and uh, collect data in an authentic way and re-examine their data and argue about their data and, and its meaning. Um, so in that sense, teaching some content in eighth grade will free up the ability of high school teachers to um, focus on um, content that is appropriate for high school students and not sort of remedial middle school content that students had missed as a result of the missed year. In addition to that, um, eighth grade science is very exciting for us because it's allowing us as a science department to reimagine that sequence which I uh, spoke to about what they learn in seventh grade, in eighth grade, in ninth grade, in tenth grade physics and chemistry, and to AP and possibly beyond into advanced work classes. So although that is in its embryonic stages um, of development, it provides the science department with some very exciting venues for self-study and, uh, and progress and development um, as a result of the absence of that gap. Right. And so as a, as a biology teacher, I can, I can speak on the fact that um, one of the things that kind of holds us back is the fact that we have to cover the vast amounts of content based on the mass frameworks in biology one. So hopefully with a little bit more background for students coming into Bio 1, um, the biology teachers can spend a lot more time um, having students applying some of these content, uh, some of these concepts, um, making the, the course a lot more project-based, um, fewer lectures, fewer worksheets. Um, and, and hopefully the students will find that the Bio 1 course more rewarding as a result of having more background knowledge coming in. So, obviously, there's a huge difference between teaching high schoolers and teaching middle schoolers. Uh, how smooth or easy was the transition, or was it was difficult a transition from teaching high schoolers into teaching middle schoolers? 
You feel that one yeah. first, Mr. Gallego? <laughs> so you, you wouldn't think it was that much of a difference. I mean, we're only talking about a, a year's difference in age. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I was teaching primarily ninth graders who are 14, 15, and now I've got the 13, 14-year-olds. Um, but there have been, there. I mean, I've noticed significant differences in terms of um, just maturity, um, you know, organization, um, but, you know, and, and, and I'm sort of focusing on some of the, the negative aspects, but there's also some, you know, some good differences as well, like um, more risk-taking, um, uh, more enthusiasm for the learning process, um, which kind of tends to fade over time as uh, high school students become more more busy. Um, so, I mean, it's it's been, it's had its goods, its good parts and its bad parts. Um, Mr. Willicke, I'm, I, I'm almost afraid to say. <laughs> there are certain things I'd like to say, but I'm almost afraid to say. Uh, you totally say I, I'm sure you can articulate those better than I. <laughs> I doubt it. Um, eighth grade is, is, is a really interesting time in everyone's life. And so um, it has been a very steep learning curve, uh, definitely for me, um, since I've primarily dealt with older students throughout my career. Um, but it's also interesting and, and I don't know, like I, I have kids who aren't middle schoolers yet. Like one of your kids is, is in middle school. I have a ninth grader and yeah. a, in a, in a sixth grader. So they're, they're past it. Yeah. So it's you true. have a middle schooler and a high, high schooler. School. Yeah. yeah so I'm, school? No. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my kids aren't there yet, but just like, I, I guess in the long term um, path of, of being like a lifelong teacher, it is interesting to learn about different contexts in which people learn. So middle schoolers are, are quite different and eighth graders are not little high schoolers. They're also not like seventh graders part two. Seventh graders and eighth graders are mm-hmm. also very different at our school. Um, so kind of learning about that and uncovering that and finding productive ways to facilitate learning uh, is, is a challenge but is, um, is an exciting challenge. Usually, right. sometimes I get a little stressed out over it, um, <laughs> but um, but overall, it's been an exciting challenge. Why is it called Unified uh, Science uh, Foundation? Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was wondering that. <laughs> um, Do you have any cooler names for it? Uh, pre-bio. Pre-bio. <laughs> pre-bio. Well, well, so I mean, one thing we didn't bring up is that the course is going to cover all, all three fields of science. So we're gonna we're gonna have a, a unit on chemistry, a unit on physics, and then two units on bio. So it isn't just a, a pre-bio class. Um, yeah, with environmental um, issues sort of interwoven, for example, in our uh, sort of chemistry unit about um, chemical energy and chemical interactions, um, the theme of ocean acidification was uh, kind of like where we concluded so that we could learn about this environmental problem, which deals with a lot of the science that they'd been learning throughout the unit. Um, ultimately, it was called Unified Science Foundations because it was kind of already in the uh, system for Boston. So it's just a name that's given to science that's in the eighth grade. So we kind of didn't have any choice because otherwise it would require reconfiguring some sort of back, backdoor stuff in SIS. So it's, it's not a very exciting reason why it's called that. So you, you guys, at least in my experiences in Ms. Bateman's class, you guys are just very fun. I kind of want to compare you guys to the Latin teachers there. You guys are all really, really cool. Um, could you guys see yourselves like voting for a, a new name for the eighth graders? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Miss Bateman requests. overriding everything. <laughs> oh well, she's prone to do that. Yeah, yeah, we'd be all for it. Whatever could help, you know, sort of give everyone a, a good impression of the uh, of the initial course. Mm-hmm. Okay. So both of you guys have been science teachers for multiple years. So, including uh, teaching eighth graders, but what's your favorite thing about teaching science to students at Boston Latin School? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Yeah. Um, it can be simple. I mean, <laughs> I mean, so the the students that we tend to teach um, tend to have a little bit of a, and I don't mean this in a negative way, a self centered sort of view on life, and. And that's fine. That's sort of the way students this age typically think. But um, when you get those aha moments, when, when a student figures out something personal about their life, their family, their situation, which now makes more sense to them as a result of learning what they learned in science class, I think those are the most exciting. And, and what makes the students most excited um, learning about in class. Um, 
sort of a key. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> not surprisingly for a science teacher, I think of a Richard Feynman quote, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher it a little bit. Like, he's a very famous physicist, and he basically said that, like, you can know how to say a bird in every language of the word, but until you can truly understand um, what makes it tick and why it flies, you kind of understand nothing. That's a, that's a paraphrasing of a quote that I can't give exactly. But I think that speaks very much to what I, I believe um, science is all about, is, is trying to decipher um, what makes the world tick, trying to find um, something that doesn't fit into the way that you think about the world and seeing if that should, in fact, change your worldview or whether that was a mistake and whether that should be sort of like smoothed out. So this attempt at like trying to uncover some sort of mechanistic understanding of the way our fascinating world and universe works is, um, is definitely something that I hope is part of what students think about when they're engaged in studying the class. Because even though from day to day when there are binder checks and do nows and, uh, and, you know, like tests and quizzes and all that, we can kind of get lost in the process of doing school. But ultimately, it's, it's, it's meant to expose people to the, the wonder of um, that sort of like investigation and exploration. Okay. Um, so actually, I have one final question for you, Mr. Bilkey. So I heard that you're really good at the guitar. Nope. <laughs> you, I heard you so heard so. wrong. Does anyone you have a guitar wrong. here? Uh, Unfortunately, uh, I don't. We put some licks on the, on the podcast. Just like, <laughs> Lay down this tasty like a lick. Guitar app. I don't know. So so if we're winding down, could um, I'm going to railroad this a little bit? Could we tell a science? Could could we tell our favorite science jokes? Do sure. any of you have a favorite science joke? Uh, Multiple interviewers. I just have one. Okay. But. Uh, what what did this toe say to the sis? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, what did the foot say to the sister foot when she was stepping on his foot? What I, I don't know if that's the, how you say, it, but <laughs> I know this one. Mitosis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> biology. Very good. I kind of butchered that, that was, question. That was the, actually the, wonderful. The joke, but I, it's something like that. That's good. Yeah. I remember hearing a joke about like I think it was like nitrate oxide because like. Something nitrogen oxide it spells like no. Um, I, I, am I right? I haven't taken chemistry yet, so yeah, <laughs> nitrogen monoxide would be yeah. You'd write it out as no. no, no. Right. So, yeah. I've yeah. seen multiple uh, jokes in which just someone asks a question and they respond with nitrogen monoxide or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Blank in one. I put you on the spot. Okay, so gold walks into a bar. The bartender see upon seeing gold. Immediately says, "Hey you, get out of here." <laughs> Mine takes place in a bar too. So, uh, so a, that's a, where a, a lot of people are today. <laughs> a neutron walks into a uh, a bar and uh, and orders a uh, a soda, of course, and the uh, and sa- and takes out its wallet and says, "Like how much?" And the bartender says, "For you, no charge." Oh my lord! Yeah. Oh boy, this has been some pretty bad I'm, jokes. I'm drawing a blank. I tell you. Science Most of my science jokes come in the form of memes, <laughs> which which would be hard to uh, to explain without a visual yeah. to accompany it. We um, should just like have that on the on the cover of, uh, for the, the the screen on YouTube. We should ha- just have the meme there. Science. <laughs> we were once doing a meme of the week in in biology class. So find a biology meme and, and post it. Um, but really? then, then they, they kind of got a little bit um, in, inappropriate at times, so we kind of had to put the kibosh on that. <laughs> um, now yeah. I'm just thinking of Rajal's Kirby. He just came oh, into God. the library and just printed up a bunch of Kirby's. That'll so happen. Kirby's? What's a Kirby? It's, it's a video game <laughs> character. <laughs> oh, you know what? Rajal sent me um, a picture of a Kirby with like human legs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was it. <laughs> just, and, it just said, and all it said was evolution. <laughs> I think that's strange. Gross. Might just be me. Well, I guess this has been it for the interview. Uh, Thank you both for coming here today. Uh, This was really great. Yeah. (laughs) And and thank you to you um, 47 people who interviewed us. (laughs) Oh, thanks, guys. I think you mean 60. Um, Yeah, okay. (laughs) All right, very good. Yeah, okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. That was great.